Well, it's hailing. Yeah, hail. Okay, so today we have uh, something special. Today we're going over the Mora Companion Heavy Duty Green. Uh, this knife is really, really awesome. Uh, if you look at any of the other survival channels, everybody at least has one knife of these. It doesn't matter which model it is, they have Mora. Because Moras are very inexpensive. They are um, they're not only good for the money, but they're accelerate past what they are uh, retailed as. These knives, let me just roll it up. This particular model, this one runs for 15 bucks. 15 bucks for a high carbon knife. Almost full tang. Now, um, when I say almost full tang, this one I think it goes at least halfway. This one is a, you know, a stick tang like the one we just reviewed last time. This is the, the K bar. This is more of um, like a rat tail tang where it thins, but it only goes about halfway towards the end. So some of the specs about this is it's made of carbon steel. It doesn't specify what grade of steel. Some of the uh, people that have these knives are talking that it's pretty close to 1095, but I'm not sure if that's actually true. Um, some other things are the blade length is 4 inches flat. The thickness is 0 0.125, if that means anything to you. I don't use decimals. The overall is 8.8. The width or the weight is uh, 4.8 ounces, and um, it features a plastic sheath and a very ergonomic grip on the handle. And I have to say that when I'm holding these in my hands and without gloves on, it's very comfortable in the hand. You know, there's no jumping that's digging into my skin. You know, there's no uh, bolts or rivets or anything that are making it a little uncomfortable. Absolutely no hot spots. The uh, hot spot test, if I didn't mention this in any other videos, is where you get a knife handle and you squeeze it as hard as you can, or any part of your hand that hurts, that's a hot spot. To me, the only part where there's actually a hot spot is this little engraving part on the handle where they made that little decal. I mean, that's it. I mean, because with a knife like this, you're not supposed to be doing anything major. You can't, you shouldn't baton with it. You shouldn't. But it can take it. Just as long as you're not chopping something like, like this thick with it. I mean, sure, it can span it, but you're going to break the knife before you break the wood. So, we're going to do a little bit of batoning, but on um, smaller stuff, thinner stuff. This is more of a craft knife, I should specify. This knife is only made, or it's basically made um, for just doing little bushcraft, uh, campcraft stuff, uh, like carving, whittling, uh, feather sticks, you know, all that. So that was a pretty thin piece of wood. We'll go a little bit thicker with this. And this is really just about as thick as you should go with a knife like this. So you see, it's, it's pretty easy, but to avoid breaking your knife, I wouldn't do anything that thicker than this. This is probably about a quarter of an inch. Yeah. A little bit more than that. So, now let's do some feather sticks with it. And this is where the knife really shines. It has a Scandinavian grind, so it's pretty good at a lot of things. I have a few knives that have some Scandies, but uh, it's not my favorite grind, but it's not the worst grind. Um, something to note about this knife, it does come with a 90 degree spine, but it's not sharp. It's pretty rounded and uh, the blade's kind of polished. So, um, what I did is I just took this to the grinder and I grind it down. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's actually a little bit too deep. I went a little overboard. But actually, this is a good thing, because then when I'm crafting, my thumb fits in that little dish cup piece. So now when I'm doing, like, stuff where I'm taking out large chunks, 
I have more of control over the knife. But if I'm doing something like feathering, I can just have it all the way back here. Got it. You know, it's really easy. Now, let's try to make a fire with this. And I did bring my friendly sweet steel. It's in my pocket over here. So, when I did grind it down, I made it so it can scrape ferro ferro rods as well as being in a thumb cup. They're fine enough. Let's try this one more time. In case you want to see all that feather stick gloriousness again. Um, some things to talk about the sheath while I'm doing this so you don't get bored watching me do this again. Um, I've heard some people on YouTube complaining about the sheath, saying it's uh, they don't like it because it's a little bit cheap. And, it will break easy and stuff like that. Well, you gotta understand, this knife is 15 bucks. You know, this knife is very cost effective. So, there's no really re no real reason to complain about the knife at all, about it being cheap or anything, because it's less than 20 bucks. I mean, yeah, I can understand about the sheath. I mean, there's some parts on it where it's getting a little uh, worn out. But I wouldn't necessarily call it cheap. I would just say it's um, it's doable. It's better than having a nylon sheath because everybody's gonna like complain about that. But you know, I haven't heard anything about anybody. I haven't heard anybody say anything about the the sheath on the Glock knife, and that's I'm pretty sure it's made out of the same stuff. The polymer. I'm not exactly sure on that, but molded plastic. Molded plastic polymer. It's all plastic. stays. Oh, another thing, since I mentioned it. Um, since this is a full tang knife, it, I wouldn't call it a straddle knife. This is a bushcraft knife. But it also states that it's a companion knife. And the reason for that my opinion, this is what I think, is so that it can be, if you have a custom Kydex sheath for this or another knife, it can be a sidekick. But if you have a knife like a Tahoma field knife and the Mo this Mora, this would be good. Buckle, you, whatever. This would be good because, um, Tahoma field knife review coming soon. Coming soon. Stay tuned. This will be really good for all your chopping, um, you know, Processing wood and all that stuff. This can be good for carving that wood if you're doing bushcraft stuff. It can be also good for because it's so thin. Tech, uh, normally with scanty grind knives, they're not good as food prep. You want something that has like a flat grind or a saber grind. Like the, um, the BK7, that has a saber grind. But not this thin, be excellent for food prep. It's awesome at bushcraft and camp stuff. This one, amazing chopping and all other kinds of stuff. So these two would be perfect together. I've seen people do all kinds of other things like Chris Tanner, he did the uh, Jessica X and the more Bushcraft Black. But you know, you can do any two knives 
and it would work. So that's just I had to say that. But um, you know, that's the more bushcraft black. I hope you guys like this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like down below. Not a thumbs down, a thumbs up down below. And make sure you comment, all that other kinds of stuff. Um, follow me on all my um, social medias like uh, Google Plus, Facebook page, Twitter, and to Sue or to Zoo, or however you pronounce it, Sue. I don't know. Um, it's a new thing. Carl the Madman is on it, so you guys should definitely go check it out. It's it's uh, kind of like Facebook, Twitter thing, but. Make sure you check me out on all my social medias, uh, like this thing. Make sure you subscribe. Haven't, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, you know, stuff. Do things that make me feel good about myself. Alright? And I'll make sure to see you guys in the next video.